Okay, well, listen, <clears throat> again, uh, Lisa, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you letting us come out and show you the airway, and I hope you enjoy the little gift that I gave you. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, tell me this. Have you ever heard of airway before? No, I haven't. You never have? Mm -hmm. When I actually get into the, uh, the uh, information I have in the book that I'm going to show you, you may realize that you've actually seen one through your grandmother or mother. Because, see, we've been around since 1920. Now, I'm going to be real honest with you, we haven't uh, been real active in this area for many years, so that's probably the reason you hadn't heard of it. But anyway, this is the Airway Centurion. Do you re you, and of course, it's sitting right here. You don't recognize seeing anything like this ever. I think one of my aunts had one. Uh -huh. And to me, as far as the style, it looks familiar. It looks similar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple things I like about the Airway, Lisa, and uh, one of them is it's 100% made in America. And to me, that's really very important. As a matter of fact, it's made right here in Alabama, made in Talladega, Alabama. And uh, our philosophy is very simple. Uh, we concentrate on the quality. Mm -hmm. so we're not interested in cutting corners. We're not interested in making it plastic. You notice it's all metal. Uh, we're interested strictly in quality. And um, by the way, this is a picture out of one of the magazines that we used to advertise in uh -huh. of the original 1920 model that we uh, actually came out with. 79 years ago. Hmm. It's kind of an unusual looking cleaner, isn't it? That's a little strange. Would you believe I got one just like that over my office? <laughs> and it works just as good today as it did the day it was made. Hmm. And uh, let me tell you this, when this came out in 1920, it had most of the good things that back computers have now. The airway invented really most of the good things. For example, that head there, that power head, mm -hmm. or that little uh, cleaning thing for your carpet, that's got gears in it, and that will actually turn and go under your carpet and your furniture. And that's not a big thing now, but in 1920, that would have been a big, big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, that bag, that's the allergy bag, again. Mm -hmm. uh, see, it was even an allergy system back then. And in the end of this handle here, that's hollow. You can actually take this, and we've done that over the office several times, and reverse the airflow with a little switch right here. And the air comes in uh, in a sucking motion through the back end of that handle. That means the lady now could clean up, you know, these uh, beams here. Hmm. So, see, it really had a lot of the good things even in 1920. This is a picture from uh, uh, Home and Garden or Look Magazine or whatever, one of those magazines of the 1939 model. Now, that one kind of looks like a fire plug. And let me tell you this. Uh, the nice thing about that is the bag that went in that machine in 1939, uh, will fit all machines from the number. Hmm. In other words, the bag I use today would actually work in that machine. These are the 40s models. It's got the little skids on instead of the uh, wheels. These are models from the 50s. Of course, you recognize Shelley Winters here. Uh, she's an old movie star. That's when she's about 20. Hmm. And uh, Yvonne DiCarlo. And uh, in other words, I could just keep going on showing you some of our advertising that we did back then. We spent a lot of money on advertising in those years. Now, at this point, we don't spend the advertising this way. We spend the advertising dollars with the customers now. And uh, we don't get as much exposure doing that, and that's one of the reasons you haven't heard from us, but it's better for the customer. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Incidentally, uh, Lisa, let me tell you this. If you're ever fortunate enough to own an Airway, you'll be joining some good company. Because I've got a page out of the 1929 magazine that Airway put out where it listed some of our more famous customers that year. Let me see if you recognize some of these names. Henry Ford, hmm. you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. He owned an airway. Okay. Wow. Uh, William Wrigley, Wrigley Chewing Gum, he owned an airway, he and his wife. Uh, William Luden, Luden Cough Drops, and would you believe Thomas Edison purchased an airway? Hmm. And you'd have thought he'd have made his airway. <laughs> you would have thought. <laughs> uh, let, let me put it this way. What this tells you, these people could have had anything they wanted. Uh, naturally, they chose the best because, you know, that's what these people would do. They chose airway, so that tells you a little bit about the quality of airway. Dr. Charles Mayo, Mayo Clinic, owned mm -hmm. an airway. The Theodore Roosevelt's owned airways. Most of your White House buildings and most of your major universities that year had airway. So what we're saying is airway started off real, real popular. As a matter of fact, by this time, I think the figures that we sold somewhere around 9 million by 1929. And people bought them then for the same reason people buy them now. This machine's got two major functions. One, it'll clean all the pollution out of the air. And when I say all of it, the bulk of it, it'll get the pollution out of the air inside your home. 
and without re-polluting the air like most machines. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you in a moment. The second thing it'll do is it'll clean your carpeting and your furniture without blocking up and losing its efficiency. And I'm going to demonstrate that. That's the two de demonstrations I'm going to do in just a moment. Incidentally, uh, were you when I, when I start talking about indoor air pollution, were you aware that the uh, air in your beautiful home here is dirtier and more polluted than the air out there? Hmm. Were you aware of that? No, I didn't. Most people aren't. And uh, do you know the reason? Well, let me just quote you something to back that up before I show you. But EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, made this statement in some of their print. The inside of the average home is five times more polluted with dust than outside. Do you know why? So you got all that dust and filth and junk out there, and you and your husband and your kids and your company, you track it in here. It gets in your carpeting. You don't have a machine that will get it out, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And uh, once you get it in here, see, your home is very tightly sealed. It stays in here. Mm -hmm. And most people are not aware of that. See, the reason you're not aware of it is your lighting is very subdued in here. But if you were to put the sunlight through that window, you could see it in the air. Have you ever looked at the window yeah. with sunlight coming in? What did you see? Oh, you can see dust particles kind of drifting down. Where did they come from? <laughs> Outside, I guess. All right, here, let me show you something. 200-watt bulb. Mm -hmm. You see that? Now, if you think that's an accident in that one spot, let's do this spot. You see that? Lovely. Okay. Were you aware that was in your car piece? Hoping it wasn't. Were you aware that was in your couches? Hmm. Okay. Now, let me say this. The reason that's in there is it gets embedded in your carpet, your furniture, and you can't get it out. And what that does is when you walk on this, that gets all that stuff up in the air. And it's, I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but it's very unhealthy to breathe that. As a matter of fact, let me quote you a couple of things. The American uh, Co College of Allergists states that half of all illnesses, half, are either caused or aggravated by polluted indoor air. Hmm. And... Uh, how much time do we spend indoors, according to the American Lung Association? About 90% of our time. So what you're, what you're doing is you're breathing polluted air. Now let me go to the back of our brochure. It says germs have no mode of loco locomotion. In other words, they don't have a way to get around in your house except to attach themselves to dust particles. How many germs do you think could be on those dust particles you saw a moment ago? I don't want to know. A bunch. All right. In 12 hours, we breathe 200 million particles of germ-laden dust and 90 million of them stay in your lungs. Hmm. Now, do you understand why people can develop allergic reactions and that's happening to breathing dust? Uh, okay, let me show you a couple other articles here. Oakland Tribune says your living room carpet is 20 times dirtier than the sidewalk, and it's got 11 times more bacteria, and guess where our kids play? Mm -hmm. Do you have any kids? Yes, we have one. One. How old? He's two. Okay, two. Well, I have a grandson that's four years old, and let me tell you what I found. From the time he was three or four months old, guess where he spent about 75% of his time? On the floor. Rolling around the carpet. <laughs> and, and you know what he's breathing? He's breathing what you saw right here because he's got his face in it most of the time. Mm. Isn't it terrible to think about that? Um, that's why Dr. Alfred Sam wrote a book, by the way, and you can buy this in most bookstores, Why Your House Actually May Endanger Your Health. You'd be healthier, really, to live outdoors. Hmm. Of course, we can't do that. You understand? So the next best thing is to do something about the indoor air pollution. That's where airway comes in. I'm telling you all this to say that we can help you. And I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to show you how we can help. Have you ever seen the dust mite? No. He's been on TV. Discovery <laughs> Channel 2020. Hmm. They do specials on this all the time. I've got some really bad news for you. What's that picture say right there? How yeah. many you sleep in your bed? You'll be going to bed tonight with somewhere between 100,000 and 10 million of dust mites because they're in your bedding initially. Huh. You know why? Because their primary food is your skin. Hmm. You see, everybody sheds millions of skin cells every day. Most of it's in your bedding and furniture. They do two things. They eat that dead skin, and then they eat the bathroom. I hate to say it that way, but that's what they do. And uh, here's, here's the easy way of saying it. This article here says they pass 20 fecal pellets per day, and you've got millions in your mm. mattress. Depends on how old the mattress is. And um, here's what happens is people, what that does, it breaks down over time. The waste, and the Discovery Channel says this in the little tapes that they run. Matter of fact, I've got a copy of one of the tapes that I play for groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it says is the waste breaks down over time, gets into the air, and you breathe it. 
And what does that cause? A lot of people develop asthmatic reactions from that. That's a Birmingham News article there in 1995, and here's another one from 1996. It says, dust mites, um, you get it upside down, we're going to read harmful to asthmatic children. You can see they breathe that, and it can cause a reaction. Now, let me say this. The whole thing, the whole reason I was pointing that out, we get that out of the way for the time being, the reason I was pointing that out is to say that airway can help you with the indoor air pollution problem. And that's the first half of the demonstration I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how we can actually help clean that stuff out of the air. Okay. That's a very simple process. And by the way, let me tell you why it's so effective before I actually demonstrate it. This has actually got three primary uh, filtrations in the system itself. The first one is the dust container. And uh, Lisa, this is not a bag like you've got in your Eureka that you told me you had. I think you told me you had mm -hmm. a Eureka. See, you've got a paper bag in that Eureka with holes going straight through it. It's like one or two layers. This is a bag within a bag. Each bag has got 14 layers of highly compacted cellulose fiber. There's 28 layers of, uh, fi of, uh, of uh, that in this bag. And what happens here when you pull the air into this bag, instead of going straight through the bag, through the holes like it does in your cleaner, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment, what it has to do, it has to weave its way through those 14 layers in the first bag. And then when it comes out the first bag and goes through the dead space, it goes through 14 more layers in the second bag. And when it comes out of this container, our printed information that I have in my book there, mm -hmm. and on the brochure it says that it takes everything out of the air down to three-tenths of a micron. Mm -hmm. And how small that is. If you pulled a hair out of your head, it's 120 times smaller in diameter. Wow. So it's very small. So what I'm saying, very little gets through that bag. Now, if there are any germs and bacteria that gets through the bag, there's then two antimicrobial filters in the machine, one under the bag and one permanently behind the motor. And the purpose of that is to kill germs and bacteria on contact. And for your information, that's listed both with FDA and it's approved by EPA. Hmm. So it's very effective. Now, I can tell you all of this, but let me just demonstrate how you clean the air. To, to clean the air in this room, you've got about probably three to 400 square feet here. You've got uh, 15 to 20 feet square in this room. If you wanted to clean this room, uh, our statistics, again, that I have in the book here with tests that's been run, uh, says to set this in the middle of the room in an upright position, cut it on, and just cut it on low, and just let it sit here and run for about 15 minutes for 300, 400 square feet. What it's doing right now is it's pulling all of the air volume in this room through this, it's pulling it down through the dust container, which gets everything down to a very minute size, and then it goes through the antimicrobial filter. Hmm. And when the air comes out the back end of the machine through the exhaust, all of the dust and the dirt and the bacteria to three-tenths of a micron and germs to that size and pollen have been hmm. taken out of the air. What you've got is you've got polluted air that goes in the front end of this thing. You've got good, clean, healthy air that comes out the back. Now, let me ask you a question. You've got a two-year-old son, you said, right? Right. You saw what was in the air a moment ago when I did the carpet with the lights. Mm -hmm. Would you rather your son breathe the first air I showed you, the polluted air, or would you rather him breathe good, clean, healthy air? Well, clean, of course. That's correct. And a lot of people today see are so serious about that that they go out and spend hundreds of dollars on air cleaners. This machine will do the same thing. Hmm. Okay? Now, the second thing this machine will do is while you're cleaning the air, It'll make the air pleasant to smell. Do you ever put fragrances in the air? All what, the time. What kind? <laughs> just, I guess anything I can find. Just anything. Let me show you what you could do. Can you get the smell out? What you do, <laughs> what we do here is I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take a little 3M HEPA filter. And by the way, this is 100% effective in removing dust too. Hmm. Uh, it also gets cat dander if you got a, if you got a cat. I've got tests on that. But in this case, uh, since airway is so effective in removing dust, I'm not even going to use it for filtration. I'm going to put a little fragrance on it, put it into the bottom of the machine cage, put the bag in it, and cut it on. And now while we clean the air, we'll make it smell like orange peeling in here. Hmm. Do you smell it? Takes yeah. just a minute. Does that smell good? What it, what it does, it goes, pulls the air through the orange, and when the air comes out the back end, the air is the orange peel. Mm -hmm. In other words, it'll stay in the in the air as long as the air is in this room. And uh, it smells pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Now, 
Let me show you another one. We've actually got about 35 of these fragrances available. I'm going to show you a couple because uh, that's my wife's favorite there, the orange. Mm -hmm. What she does when she vacuums, she puts orange in here. And uh, everywhere she uses the vacuum, all over the house, smells like orange peel. Hmm. Now, how long cool. does that last? Uh, as long as that air. air. Uh -huh. it, when the air is circulated out, mm -hmm. well, then it's gone. So it'll last for hours. And after a few minutes, you will get used to it and you won't smell it. But somebody will walk in, first thing they'll say is, man, it smells good in here, you mm -hmm. know? And let me show you my favorite. I grew up in uh, Clinton. You ever heard of Clinton? Oh, yes. And uh, my granddad, among other things, when I was growing up, raised strawberries. So I like strawberries. That's my favorite because this reminds me of home when I was a kid. And we all like to go back to home when oh, we were yeah. kids, don't we? All right. I'll cut this on now. Tell me which one of these you like best when you smell it. I think I'm with your wife on the orange You like the orange. <laughs> you don't like the sweetness there, do you? It's a little much. It's a little much. All right, I love it because I love even the taste of strawberries. But mm -hmm. that's why we've got 35 of these fragrances available. Because, see, you'll like one thing, your husband will like another, your mom will like another. So whatever you like, we've got. Now, let me tell you this, though. If you ever again own an airway, we'd love to sell you our fragrances. However, you don't necessarily have to buy our fragrances. You've got the best you can buy right now in your kitchen in there. You know what they are? No clue. Vanilla extract. Really? Yeah. Don't you like vanilla? Oh, yeah. See, that's a good soft smell. In addition to that, you can put things like peppermint extract, if you've got that, or cinnamon. You can put that. In addition to that, you can put your own perfume on it, if you like. Hmm. And put your husband's uh, shaving lotion on it. See? And, uh, so, and I've got people that do that. I had, had a lady a while back that put something called windsong on it, you know? Mm -hmm. It smelled kind of good. You know, I liked it. So you put anything on there that's liquid or spray. And I'm going to show you one more. And the reason I'm going to show you this, I believe you should, you told me that your uh, son had allergies to some extent. Yes, some. Okay. Have you ever had him tested? No, we haven't. Never have? Uh, does he ever have stopped up noses? Oh, yes. What about you and your husband? Do y'all have stopped up noses? All the time. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's pretend you got a stopped up nose, and tonight uh, you're going to bed. Your nose is really stopped up. What do you do about it? Do you just go to bed and grumble and grumble? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes? What do you do? Normally it takes some Cetaphed or something. Or Let me show if you it's the baby, I put him in a bath. Okay. Some. Let me show you something that's easier and it's more effective. Uh, put a little menthol, mm -hmm. or in your case, big liquid out of your medicine cabinet on a, one of the pads. Put this in the bedroom 10 minutes before you go to bed. Shut the door. Let it run for about 10 minutes. Cut it off. Hmm. And the air in that room, as long as you don't pull it out with a fan, as long as that air is in that room, that's what you breathe, that menthol. Wow. Now, that kind of opens you up. That, yeah. Let me put it this way. Let me tell you what that reminds me of. When I was a kid, my mom, when I would get the flu or whatever, she'd rub me down with mentholatum, put a hot towel on me so it absorb into my skin. Mm -hmm. Has your mom ever done that? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is the same thing, except it's cleaner and nicer. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the menthol with the airway, and I'm making the air have the menthol in it, and then you breathe that into your lungs where the problem is, and it's much more effective, and it's much more, uh, it was much cleaner. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, uh, let me say this, that's much healthier, too, than using nut nasal sprays. I was glad to hear you not say nasal <laughs> sprays, you know. Well, those are pretty intrusive. Well, let me put it this way. In the last two years, I've actually sold this machine to two people, in the last year, as a matter of fact, to two people that actually had no sense of smell, and the reason they had no sense of smell is they became addicted to after no spray. Hmm. And it destroyed their sense of smell. You ever know anybody like that? No, I haven't. Well, I've met two of them in the last year. Hmm. One of them is in Morris, Alabama, <laughs> just about 30 miles above Birmingham. Here. And uh, now, uh, Lisa, that's the first half of the demonstration. I showed you what we call a total air treatment with the airway. Mm -hmm. I showed you how we do three things. One, we can put medicine in the air. Two, we can put fragrances in the air, whatever you like, so you've got a pleasant smell in your home. And three, we can just cut the machine on or while we're cleaning, pull the air through the machine and filter out all the bad things like the germs and the bacteria and the pollen and the uh, whatever. And you, you breathe good, clean, healthy air that way. Mm -hmm. Of those three things, which impress you the most? Uh, the smell, the medicine, or clean the, the air? The clean, the air. I was Cleaning. hoping you'd say that. Because, see, that's the one that affects your health. Mm -hmm. And let me say this. I can take about 20 minutes with this machine. I can pull all the 
little volume of air in this room through the machine, and I can get the dust out of the air. But right now, that would be of no avail. It wouldn't do any good. Do you know why? There's still dust in my carpet. Yes, ma'am. Until you get this out of your carpet, you can't clean the air. Because mm. every time you walk on that yeah. carpet, it's back in the air. Second major function of this machine, where a regular vacuum cleaner, matter of fact, just about any vacuum cleaner other than the airway, cannot clean effectively your carpet, this can. And I know that that's illogical to your mind when I say that. You're thinking, well, why can't my Eureka clean that? Well, it's like stirred up and puts it into a bag. Why? Yes, this why is the why same. Why can't yeah. clean? All right, let me explain this. The way a vacuum cleaner works is you cut it on and you pull air off the floor through the hose, through the bag, and where does the air go? By the way, that air coming off the floor pulls the dirt into the bag. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that pulls the dirt into the bag, the air. When you pull the air into the bag, where does the air go? Back out of the bag. That's correct. It goes through your bag. That's why your Eureka bag is a paper bag or cloth bag. It could be the one because that air goes straight through it. Now, here's what happens. Two things happen. As you're pulling that junk out of the floor, about a third of it is really very fine dust. It's almost like powder. And as that air goes through that bag, about half of it will go back into the air with the, with the air. In other words, you pull it in the front end and you blow it out the back end. Let me ask you a question. Do you smell your vacuum when you cut it on sometimes? Sometimes. There's you know, a why? musty smell. Yeah, it's blowing around your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you smell it. And what you're breathing is you're breathing the dirt and the dust and the bacteria worse and the germs that have bred inside that filthy bag because you probably don't ink it for ever, what, two months? Month? Probably every month. Yeah. Well, do you realize that dark, filthy, warm a bag, do you realize how many germs and bacteria breed in there? Mm. And what you're doing is you're pulling that air through that and you're blowing it right in your face. And uh, that's a very unhealthy situation. That's the first thing it does. Now, the reason it doesn't clean is when you start cleaning, and I'm going to demonstrate that in just a very few minutes, within the first few minutes as you pull that dirt into the bag, it'll explode around the inside of that bag and it'll coat the inside of that bag with a layer of dust. And what it'll do is it'll block up all those breathing nodes. That'll happen in just a very few minutes. And when that happens, when you can no longer pull air through the bag, you now no longer can pull dirt off the floor because the air is the only thing that pulls the dirt off the floor. And I'll tell you how you've seen it in your in your uh, vacuum. Have you ever run?